I bet most of you know the story of Alice in Wonderland. And you know that Alice drank a potion so that she could get into a tiny little door and then drank a potion so she could get big again. And she kept on drinking the potion in her dream. This story, Magic Growing Powder, is basically the same idea, except instead of a potion, it's powder. Magic Growing Powder by Janet Quinn Harkin. Once there was a king named Max. He was very, very short. King Max hated being short, although no one else seemed to mind. He spent all his time trying to make himself taller. He hung by his hands from the lights, but that just hurt his arms. He hung by his feet, too. He ate bowl after bowl of spinach until he began to turn green, but nothing made him taller. So King Max sat and sulked all day. He sent his whole court away and filled the palace with strange people who promised to make him taller. His only child, Princess Penny, was very sad. Father, she said, there is no one to rule your kingdom. But the king would not listen to her, so things got worse and worse. One day, two strangers came to see the king. Your majesty, they said, we have brought you this. And they opened a small wooden box. What is it? asked King Max. It looks like a box of sand. I bet you know now what that box has in it. I'll bet you know. Do you think? Magic growing powder, said the strangers. When some of his fa this falls onto a living thing, it grows overnight. How much does the powder cost? asked the king. Half of your kingdom, said one of the strangers. And your daughter's hand in marriage, said the other. Cheap at the price, said the king. Princess Penny did not believe the strangers, and she did not want to marry either one. Now wait just a minute, father, she said. We must test the powder first. Very well, said the king. The strangers went to the window and sprinkled some powder onto the daisies below. Just wait overnight, said the strangers. At night, they dug up the daisies and planted sunflowers. Sure enough, by morning, there were flowers reaching to the window ledge. I'll take the powder, said the king. 
Just a minute, said the princess. It worked on flowers, but does it work on anything else? We must try it again. Oh, very well, said the king. So the stranger sprinkled some on the palace cat. They shut it in the cellar for the night. While everyone else was asleep, they brought in a tiger instead. Next morning, a deep growl came from the cellar. Goodness, shouted the king. That cat is huge. The powder works. Bring me half my kingdom. Just a minute, father, said Princess Penny. You wouldn't want to grow too tall, would you? Look how large those flowers and that cat grew. Try the powder on these men first. Then we shall know the correct dose for a person. Good idea, said the king. That Princess Penny is pretty smart, don't you think? But the strangers didn't think so. They looked unhappy when the king sprinkled powder on their heads. They looked unhappy when guards locked them in the room for the night. But in a few minutes, they fell asleep. So far, so good, said Princess Penny. She had put a sleeping powder into their wine. When all was quiet, she crept out of the palace and called together all the carpenters and all the tailors and all the shoemakers. What do you think she's going to do? Think you know? What do you think is she going to do? They made two tiny beds. They made tiny shoes and tiny clothes. They lowered the ceiling. You think you know? I think you know what's going to happen? Let's see. In the morning, when the two strangers woke up, they were hanging over the ends of, ends of their beds. They leaped up and banged their heads on the ceiling. They tried to get dressed, but their clothes were way too tiny. Now, what do you think is going to happen? Help! Help! We've turned into giants, screamed the two men. They leaped out the window and ran away and were never, ever seen again. Princess Penny told her father what she had done. What a fool I have been, he sighed. I should quit right now and let you be queen. Rubbish, said Princess Penny. Being short doesn't matter. You can be a good king if you try. As long as he has a good Princess Penny beside him. Don't you think? So King Max called back all the court. He worked so hard at being a good king that he didn't have time to notice he was short. And what's more, the people didn't notice he was short either. So there you go. 
Short is beautiful and smart. There you go. So even if you're short, you can still be smart and beautiful. Doesn't have anything to do with your height.